Hello, I'm Jay Lyman, Senior Analyst with 451 Research, a division of S&P Global Market Intelligence. And I'm pleased to be joined today by Thenga Panusami, Senior Product Manager for AB Suite at Unisys. Thanks for being with us, Thanga. Thanks for having me, Jay, and good to join you. Let's start off by talking about what is low-code, no-code, and why is it important to enterprise mission-critical computing? IT is becoming even more important in the post-COVID scenario, and uh, you know, digitization is happening in a much more rapid pace. In the industry currently, you know, we are facing two key challenges. One, uh, you know, the traditional IT systems are not able to keep up uh, you know, with the pace that the business needs. Okay, that's the number one challenge. The number two challenge is that, uh, you know, there is not enough developers to meet the business needs. And because of that, many new initiatives don't kick off at all. So that's where, you know, to solve these two key problems, you know, low code, no code product and technologies play a key role. Uh, they help in two ways. One, as it says, it's, you know, low code and no code. Uh, we enable the developers or the citizen developers to quickly uh, develop applications with minimal coding and also to enable you know people whom we call as a citizen developers you know who are relatively have lesser skills in IT you know they could also quickly be onboarded and they could start uh, developing applications. Yeah, you mentioned the citizen developers and uh, you know our research shows that uh, there's a number of uh, critical stakeholders beyond software developers and IT operators uh, that are important to DevOps, to software development uh, and deployment, uh, whether that be traditional IT admins, uh, security teams, uh, data analytics and data science teams, um, and, as well as management and leadership. So there's sort of this whole host of non-developer people uh, that can benefit from, from low-code, no-code, is that you know an accurate statement you think the way you know we look at citizen developers typically uh, you know a non it person he's still part of an organization but he does traditionally you know he does not report to an it organization he could be you know part of a marketing department he could be part of a sales department or like you said it could be you know some other operations team a business operations team uh, you know historically they always had to depend on, be dependent on the it team to develop applications but you know with this low code develop low code no code development technology you know it enables the citizen developers you know to go ahead and get getting started you know, in the development of their applications and all this could be done with the support of IT in the past you know citizen developers have tried to do and sometimes shadow IT can potentially develop uh, and that could lead to potential governance issues so the you know with the low code no code it not only enables citizen developers to quickly get started with application development but it also puts a good governance in place and that provides you know the support and blessing from the IT team as well now that we've discussed a little bit what low code no code is uh, i'd like us to talk uh, a bit about what are the advantages uh, synergies that enterprises can gain uh, by embracing a low-code, no-code approach? I think the number one is collaboration, uh, you know, especially with the business and IT team having a better collaboration, you know, the business team could put together a quick prototype and then hand it over to an IT team to potentially develop it or they could take the, if it's a smaller application, they could do it kind of end-to-end. -end. But I think the key piece is, you know, low-code, no-code tool sets provide a great platform for the business and IT to collaborate. I think that's the number one uh, top benefit that we see from our clients. Uh, the second one I would say is, you know, the speed in which, you know, you could go to market. Uh, we talked about, you know, the one of the key reasons why people go to low code, no code is, you know, how can I get to the market faster? So it really helps to speed up the application development and go to market faster because the business, you know, the citizen developer or the developers, they use a drag and drop technology. The code is generated, the databases could be generated. So a lot of these things happen in the background and with the quick deployment and an easy deployment, you know, everything is taken care of in a very seamless way. So I think the second key benefit I would say is, you know, the speed aspect of it. I think those probably are the number one and number two benefits that we see why our clients use uh, low-code, no-code technology, uh, Jay. 
Yeah, and it seems also that, that low code, no code can help address, you know, what we see in our surveys as one of the top challenges of uh, DevOps and software development and deployment. And that is uh, conflicting processes and, uh, you know, approaches um, that are within an organization um, and, and getting everyone on the same page uh, is definitely always a priority. Yeah, that's a great point, uh, Jay. Uh, that's where I think, you know, Unisys Agile Business Suite kind of differentiates a lot of other uh, vendors in the market. Uh, you know, many other vendors are great to get started with and to do some simple applications. But when you're really looking at an enterprise grade application, you know, for a banking sector or for a large public sector client, the key thing is that, you know, there's going to be many developers. There are multiple citizen developers and there are multiple professional developers. They all need to collaborate in a very effective way. And that's where the DevOps piece comes in in a very critical way. You know, somebody is developing a certain application and there are other developers also developing some similar, you know, or you know, parts of a component of that particular application. So it's very important, you know, in the way, you know, the, the, the whole application is managed across from the right from the source control, from the testing aspect and all the way moving it into, you know, doing a user acceptance testing and finally moving it into the production environment. This whole thing needs to be effectively managed. And that's where, you know, uh, Agile Business Suite kind of helps manage across the entire DevOps cycle so that there aren't many conflicts again, you know, within respect to the developers helping in continuous integration and continuous uh, delivery as well, uh, Jay. Let's go ahead and focus on what are some of those key capabilities, features, elements that enterprises need to consider uh, when they're evaluating a low code, no code platform? Uh, that's a great question, Jay. Uh, you know, there's hundreds of products in the low code, no code market space. Uh, so there are several startups, there are several large vendors who are moved into this space. So the clients and organizations really need to do a good due diligence to select the right vendor. Uh, you know, our experience have shown that, uh, you know, different vendors have different focus areas. Some are very good at the database part. Some are good at a multi-user experience part. Some are good at the process logic part. Uh, some are probably good at you know, robotic process automation part. Uh, so I think uh, the, you know, when an organization is evaluating vendors, I think they really need to look at what is the area you know, they are trying to you know, address and which is the key capabilities that they need. And uh, there are vendors like AB Suite also, which kind of provides general purpose capabilities, which helps be it in the database part or be it in the, you know, the user interface part, or it could be in the business logic part. So they really need to see whether the vendor is providing general purpose capabilities and providing the breadth of the capabilities. I think that's the first key aspect to look at. Uh, the second I would state is, uh, you know, how can the applications be truly scalable? Are they really secure? Because, you know, once the application is developed, you know, at the, you know, the low code platform takes care of a lot of the underneath uh, platform level and uh, you know low level details so it's very important you know those are taken care effectively security is a very key element and that could be never be compromised about and as the number of users continue to grow you know it really needs to scale up so scalability becomes a very critical aspect so you know i think they need to look at one from a capability standpoint and i think they also need to look at you know can my application truly become an enterprise uh, application and the third thing I would state is that you know with a lot more new vendors into the market we also need to see what kind of experience that vendor kind of brings into the table are they a proven vendor do they have clients who really will truly have built mission critical applications uh, with their uh, low code uh, platform so I think those would be the probably the three key aspects uh, to look at Jay yeah and you sort of touched on it uh, but it always seems like it's a balance of giving developers and DevOps teams the tools that they want to work with, uh, but doing so so that their work is, you know, in a sanctioned, secure, and compliant way, and not the shadow IT uh, sort of deployments that that you mentioned. That that's always important. That balance. Yeah, absolutely, Jay. Yeah, we absolutely need to ensure that 
uh, you know, with this you know, low code, no code, I think the one of the primary benefits, you know, we, have, we are also looking at is that the shadow IT gets eliminated because while it kind of enables a citizen developer to do the, you know, the development, a large part of it is commissioned and managed by the enterprise IT. So that way you get, you know, you are getting uh, the support from them as well. And it doesn't become a shadow uh, IT. And that's probably a good stopping point. Uh, but thank you very much, Sangha, for your time and the discussion today. Thanks for having me, Jay. Uh, if anybody wants to know more about AB Suite, you can check out our website, unisys.com. And to find more about our research and analysis, you can do that at 451research.com.